So you came back. Look, so now today uh, I'm going to be doing something um, that I've been wanting to do for a while, right? Um, I went to the store. I wanted to get uh, some ribs. And I did get some ribs. We got some ribs. Mom and Straw grabbed some ribs. Um, but the butcher at the grocery market threw us a curveball, right? I wanted to get some beef back ribs. Now I did go back myself and get the right kind. But uh, the beef back ribs, the, the problem was it wasn't a full rack, right? So he chopped them up, okay? It's not what I wanted, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook it uh, African style, right? I'm going to be using a, a tagine or a tajin or however you want to pronounce it, but um, they come in various sizes. Uh, I, I don't have the, the giant size. Um, but to give you an idea of what it is, uh, this, right, is a cast iron Dutch oven, okay? Cast iron Dutch oven, right? Has a nice heavy lid, cast iron completely, right? I will be doing some videos on how to use that and what I use that for. Now, the uh, Tajin, right, is this guy. Okay, it's an African, basically, it's an African Dutch oven, okay? Um, they come in various sizes, right? You know, the girls, they laugh because it looks like a circus tent, right? But it does the job, okay? And I've seen these things in various sizes. I've seen some of these things, you know, when I went to Africa, some of them were big as dog houses. Those things were gigantic, just incredible. I thought it was a dog house, you know, being American, but you know, that was some, you know, 30 years ago, probably 26, 30 years. I didn't know any better, but I was learning, right? And they were cooking this for the whole village, okay? And the food was delicious, okay? You cook it basically low and slow, it's simmered, the meats, the vegetables, and goat, you know, I love the goat cooked in it, right? Lamb, I mean, chicken's okay in it, right? Beef is excellent, and I'm going to be doing beef pack ribs in here um, because I have them, so I'm going to use them, right? So stay tuned, I'm going to show you what I do with it. And I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you get you your own Tajin and a hey, try it yourself. You might like it, but be warned. Depending on which one you get, the cost will vary. Okay. I learned that a long time ago. You can get a cheap one for cheap, and it'll break and crack on you real easy. Okay, because normally they're made out of clay. Right, the one I have is cast iron with a little enamel in it, ceramic enamel. I like that. Um, but th the price can range from, you know, 40 bucks and can get up, you know, up around, you know, five, six hundred dollars. Right, so be careful. It is definitely one of those accessories that you get what you pay for. So you want to keep that in mind. So find a nice, happy balance. For what you're making okay and i'm not taking away from the americanized uh, dutch oven the cast iron dutch oven it's very versatile i'll show you how to do that but then again the african uh tagine attached it has its places too i mean it has a lot of places you understand that but enough of that let's get to the video Hey, this is Shaw Sharon. That is the best elevated music I ever heard. Okay, so what we have here, we have our beef back ribs. We have um, just over three and a half pounds of them. Right, 
I uh, went to get them from the store, but they were not a full rack, so um, they were cut up, already cut up. So I figured, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and make them like this. Now I'm leaving the membrane on them, on the back, you know, just to hold them together. You know, some people like it, like the beef membranes, but we'll see how it goes. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to cover this with water and we're going to put it in the refrigerator for about an hour. So let me get this covered up. I got this covered with water. Put a plate on it. Here I'm going to put this in the refrigerator for about an hour. Let it soak, get that excess blood and whatever bone and grit, uh, bone dust um, and other debris off of it. So I'm going to give it about an hour and then we'll uh, start marinating it and we'll go to the next step. So we have a two and a half gallon Ziploc bag, okay? And what I'm gonna do, the ribs, they've been rinsed off, you know, they've been soaking, so I don't have to worry about any bone chips or debris or nothing like that. Just gonna pat them dry and put them in the Ziploc, right? So we can season them. Now, if you see any loose fat, any additional loose fat, you can pull it off, pull it off. If not, don't worry about it. Now, I'm leaving the membrane on because the way the butcher cut it, I'll be fighting with this thing all day long. You know, they know they're wrong for that, but you know, things happen. So you just have to work with what you got. Okay, so let's get these all nice and dried. Get any loose fat. They may have been missed while you're rinsing it. Get that off. Now we're not trimming the fat because we actually want that fat, right? Because fat is flavor. You know, saying that, I guess I must be delicious. You get that? See what I did there? Like that? Okay, right, whatever. Let's get back to it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pat these dry. And then we're going to work on our seasonings that we're going to be marinating this stuff in. And we're going to be marinating it for about an hour and a half. Okay? So let's get what to that. What we have here, we have about a quarter of a cup to a third of a cup of olive oil. Right? We have about a tablespoon of cumin. About a tablespoon of paprika. Yeah. Tablespoon of ginger. We have a tablespoon of white pepper. Tablespoon of salt. We have a tablespoon of cinnamon, right? And then lastly, uh, we have a tablespoon of uh, of coriander. Sorry about that. Okay. And we also have our beef back ribs here. Now let's go ahead and mix these spices. All right, up. so let's get these mixed in. This is gonna be our dry rub uh, for our ribs. So add the salt in, kosher salt, our coriander, that in there, our cinnamon, right? Our white pepper. Now with the white pepper, be careful because white pepper is actually a little hotter than black pepper, okay? And our paprika. And our ginger, our ground ginger, right? And then we're gonna add our cumin. Now we're gonna use a fork and mix this all up. And it mixed very nice. Now we're gonna take our beef back ribs and we're gonna put half of our seasonings in. Close the bag up and mix it up. All right. Now we're going to add the remaining spices to it. And then we'll just mix this up. Okay, now at this point is when we add the olive oil. Okay. All around in there. Yep, just like that. Now we're going to close it, let half of the air out, and we're going to mix it. 
Okay. Squeeze the air out. Into a bowl. And this goes in the fridge for at least an hour and a half. Now I might go for an hour and a half, maybe hour 45, might even do two hours. Just see how I feel. But what I do know is that about every 30 minutes, I'm going to mix this up. Give that olive oil and these seasonings time to get everywhere. So I'll see you uh, when this right, is done. So I know I said in about an hour, and, hour and a half, hour 45 minutes, maybe even two hours. But you know what? You know, life happens, okay? You have to put some stuff off. So what's happening is, hey, it's been 24 hours. So the, the uh, beef back ribs have been marinated in the spices for 24 hours. You know, I was gonna wear my Ultimate Warrior t-shirt, you know, but I couldn't find it um, because the flavors are gonna be ultimate, right? Because of how long they marinate. But we're gonna keep it moving and I'm gonna go ahead and complete this dish for you so you can see how everything works out. Stay tuned. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna sear uh, the ribs, right? on all sides and then we're going to saute some of the vegetables uh, before we use and uh, before we put them in the tension and put them uh, in the oven okay um, just watch what I do and you'll see okay so on. what we have here for this next part so I'm gonna start at the top here we have our our beef bank ribs they've been marinating we have two cups beef broth right Give it a nice beef flavor. We have about three stalks of celery, one onion, thinly sliced, okay, white onion. We have about six uh, red potatoes, little red potatoes. They're in water here and I have lemon juice in them so they don't turn brown on you, right? Real important. We have about a cup and a half of diced tomatoes. Okay, have about a half a cup of carrots. These are baby carrots I'm using. Half a cup of red cooking wine. About a half a cup of parsley. About a half a cup of olives. Now these olives, they've been pitted, right? So there's no seeds in it, they're not stuffed with anything. Now, six dates. I've taken the pits out of them. They have about four apricots, dried apricots. I just cut them in half, put them in here. And we got a quarter of a cup of almonds. And about a tablespoon of minced garlic. So, I'm going to show you what we're going to do, how we're going to work this out. So, the first thing we need to do is sear the ribs. Okay, so we're heating our pan up. If you've been watching my channel for a while, uh, you can probably hear I'm preheating the oven. That beast, boy, let me tell you. So I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of canola oil to the pan. Right? So we can sear this marinated meat. And once this gets heated up, we're going to go ahead and add the meat. You just want to give it a good browning on, on you know, most of the sides. Now, the reason I say most of the sides is because of the curve of the bone. You might not be able to sear the bone side. You understand? So that's why I say that. So let's start adding these guys. And now, once they're brown, we're going to put them in the base of the tajin which I have sitting on the cookie sheet. There we go. Add these in. You might not be able to get them all in, but that's fine. Take your time. You're not going anywhere. We're gonna let these sear for a couple minutes and then we'll turn them. So let's start turning these on the side. Now 
you can just smell all the flavors. The cinnamon's coming through. Oh, the cumin, the cardamom, you can smell it all. And just get that other side. Oh, not ready yet. If you try to move your meat and it doesn't budge, the natural sugars have not caramelized enough to release it. So let it sit. Okay, these should be ready to turn now. See? The proteins have released. And we can turn them. We can move them now. So remember that. If you're going to move your meat, your chicken, your fish, if it does not move, it's not time to move it. It has not caramelized properly. So keep that in your brain housing group. Let's move these to the tajin. Just put them right in. Okay, let's add our other one. Same thing, meat side down. Go. You know, basically just sear like two minutes, you know, per side, right? Just keep it simple. Now when these get done, I'm not gonna show you the whole process. Dude, you saw the first batch, right? So when you see me again, we'll start working on the vegetables. Well, a few of the vegetables. You'll see what I'm talking about. Now I remove the beef bag ribs out of here. Now this is this is too much oil. Okay? So we're gonna get rid of at least about 90% of it so we can start sauteing our vegetables. Be right back. Alright, so you see what we're working with? A little to no oil. Now we're gonna add our onions. All of them. I saw that one jump. So I'm not touching it. Actually, I'm going to throw it away. Hold on. Let's throw this away. Give me a chance to get my wooden spoon. So we can sweat the onions, you see. Now we're going to have our celery. Celery goes in. And when the vegetable starts sweating, it's going to somewhat deglaze the pan, pull all the bits off the bottom. That's why you see the little dark marks. That's flavor. It's called fun. Right? F-O-N-D. Fun is flavor. Now to further deglaze this, we're going to add our red wine, our red cooking wine. Just add it. Right? And you can scrape up all the bits. Scrape up all the bits off the bottom of your pan. Get all that good flavor. Get it up. You got to be quick though. Yep, get it up. Cause see that? See it comes up. See that? It comes up. Deglazing the pan. And what deglazing basically means is you're adding a liquid to a hot pan that's gonna get that's going to lift all of the fond off of the bottom of the pan. So it's in essence gonna take all of the flavor off the bottom of the pan and make a sauce out of it. Alright, so we can get this going. Put this up to medium here. We want to get all these flavors in here. Look at that. Clean bottom of the pan. The red wine's lifted it all up. And what we're doing now 
as you want to uh, simmer it because and, you know especially if you got children you don't want drunk children right so let's get that alcohol out of there but keep the flavor so you want to simmer it for about five to ten minutes right and get that alcohol out that's burn it out and we haven't forgot about the ribs the ribs are in the base of the tajin, right? On the cookie sheet, the oven has been preheated, you know, at 275, because we're gonna be cooking this in the oven for about two and a half hours, maybe even three. So I've turned off the heat, because right now, I'm gonna take these vegetables, let me move it over, Put my attachment right here, and I'm going to put the vegetables right on top for now. Okay? It's right on top. You know, don't be bashful about it. It'll fit. It'll work. Okay? Get in there. And now I'm going to put the top on this and we're going to get ready to put get ready to put it in the oven. But I am going to tell you something about it when I do that. So put the top on it. There we go. All right. So at this point, uh, before I put it in the oven, I'm going to add my garlic, sprinkle my garlic around, right? Sprinkle the garlic around. I'm going to add my diced tomatoes because they're going to make an excellent sauce as they cook and break down. Get it all in there. Don't be bashful. Okay. And our beef broth. I'm going to put that in there. So at this point, we're basically going to be braising it, right? So now this is going to go on. And we're going to put it in um, the 275 degree oven right now. We're going to do it for an hour first. And then we're going to add more ingredients. So you see I removed my rack. So now I'm using the bottom rack. We're going to put the tajin uh, on the bottom. Okay, just like that, 275 degrees, and we're going to let this go for an hour before we add, you know, things like the carrots and uh, the potatoes. All okay? right, real talk. So, um, the tajin, or the tajin, or the tajin, however you want to call it, you know, as my girl said, it looks like a circus tent, right? But here's, here's the, the beauty of it, okay? You put your foods at the base, right? And because it has that cone, when your food is cooking, the steam and the flavors go up to the top, but it can't escape. So it rains back down onto your food, right? To help keep it flavorful and juicy. You know, that's the beauty of it. That's a different level of culinary expertise, right? So it doesn't matter if you're doing chicken, pork, beef, duck, lamb, goat, it doesn't matter. Whatever seasonings you put in it, because in the traditional pans and stuff, the seasonings and the flavor stay at the bottom and kind of permeate the meat a little bit. But in the fashion, it goes up, the steam goes up, and it rains back down, right? So it's almost like a self-basting and that makes it worth everything. And so when you cook in it, and you don't show anybody what you cooked it in, when they taste the food, they're amazed by the flavor. And yes, you tell them what you, you know, what you, the ingredients are, they go back home and they try to duplicate it, but they can't because they don't have that rainfall of flavor. 
right? That's that cooking, that steaming action. That's what makes this so great. So enjoy the flavor. If you ever cook with one of these uh, vessels, enjoy the flavor. There's nothing else like it. Nothing else I can really say, except bon appetit. Let's get back to cooking. Okay. And what we're going to do, okay, you see it's starting to cook down a bit. Now we're gonna add our dates. Get our dates in here. And our apricots, apricots, however you wanna say it. Those in there. We're just gonna spread them around. And our olives. Are you gonna need those? Get all the good flavors in there. Now we're gonna put these, gonna put these back in the oven for another hour, and then we're gonna add our carrots and potatoes. So let's get these back in the oven. Scribs out. And we're going to add our carrots. Carrots in. Got our potatoes. And our ribs back to it. And these are going to go back in for about an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes for the potatoes to get done, and we'll be ready. So when you take it out of the oven, look at that. Oh, it smells incredible. So you've done this on the potatoes. Feels pretty good. Not bad. Let me get a potato out of there and get it, give it a full test. It's done. Take that off. Take the top off. Now let's go ahead and move this over and plate some up. Let's get this plate up. Let's get some of these ribs. Take a little bit of rib there. I want to get some of these veggies. go. A bit more veggies. Maybe get another little piece of rib. Maybe another one of the smaller guys. Go. So here we have our braised, right, beef back ribs. They are using the thajin. Right, we've got our vegetables. You know, it looks delicious. If you like this, try the video out. Or try the recipe out. Right? Give me your comments. Share it out if you can. Right? Hit subscribe if you're not already subscribed. We can always use more members in the peanut gallery. Right? That being said, this straw straw, I'm getting ready to eat. I almost forgot. I had to garnish it with the parsley and the almonds. Can't forget those. Yeah.